I'm blue, I buddy that blue. If I was green, I was blue. Oh, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see you guys there. Welcome back to another video where we're building an all wheel drive Miata. The first one in the world, actually. Car's painted. Phase two is pretty much finished. You know, the car is looking the part. It's painted, and this stuff will be painted soon. So, phase three, where we disassemble it and install new upgrades to it, like suspension upgrades, engine upgrades, more boost, bigger turbo, all that kind of stuff. That phase is beginning now. In this video, we are starting with the suspension. So we're going to pull off all the suspension, the rear, lower, and upper control arms, the rear subframe, the rear diff, and the front lower control arms. We're gonna put new bushings and everything, some polyurethane bushings, courtesy of Moss Miata for the rear Miata stuff, and just a Subaru, Subaru parts retailer for the front Subaru stuff. Then we'll go ahead and remove all the rust off the suspension parts and paint them. In this video, while we're waiting for paint to dry, we'll probably pull the engine, start painting the wheel wells, disassemble some of the front, that will allow us to paint other stuff. Pretty much, we gotta go backwards before we go forwards. So it's time to tear this baby apart and make her that much better. struggle with that one bolt on the other side and cry. The bottom bolt on the driver's side that holds the strut to the lower control arm, the nut on the back started to spin. So I welded it and it was coming out. Then the head rounded out. So I tried to hammer on a smaller, smaller bolt and then that broke the weld. So now I have to weld it back on, hammer on a, it's a nightmare. So I'm trying to avoid having to cut it because that will That'll be a real nightmare. But while I struggle with that and cry, I'm gonna go ahead and start removing these bushings. Now, I went ahead and purchased a nice Harbor Freight press. Not too bad, 100 bucks, well, 120 bucks. But it'll make this job super easy and any you know wheel bearing type jobs possible in the future. All I have to do is press these bad boys out. Once they're pressed out, then I can weld some stuff, start cleaning them off and start painting them. I also have some extended wheel studs for the back right here. And yes, we are using the four lug still. We're sticking with the four lug. But I went ahead and hammered out the short, old, rusty, weak wheel studs. And then I'll put these in after it's all painted up. These wheel studs are longer, so they allow the use of slip-on spacers. They're also stronger, they won't strip out as much, and they won't snap if you're doing some, some mad G's or something like that. So we'll be all good there. Holy f God damn. Oh. The bushings are out, all the control arms are out, all of the hubs are de-studded, calipers are off. It's time to get to painting, kind of.
progress update. The entire rear suspension has been removed. Yeah, you already knew that. All the bushings are out. You probably already knew that. The subframe has been coated in POR, same with the differential, the front of it at least. POR is amazing for this because, you know, it's had a lot of surface rust on it, but it was still structurally sound. But getting all that surface rust off to paint it would have been a pain in the ass. So just putting POR over all of it, it looks pretty good. And POR won't chip or anything. So it's a really tough coating. It's kind of like a, a budget uh, powder coating. Only pain in the butt thing is that it does take a while to apply and it's kind of expensive. But the hubs turned out great as you can tell. I mean, look at those. Like those look freaking awesome. Control arms are looking good. So that's the entire rear sorted. Before we move on to the front, we're gonna go ahead and undercoat. Kind of pretty much undercoat this thing. Get, you know, paint over all of this, paint the wheel wells, paint in here, make it nice and fresh looking. Now for that, I have some Duraback. Durabac, Duraback. Duraback is essentially the ultimate bed liner. It's scratch resistant, it's salt and water resistant, corrosion resistant, slip resistant, flexible, chemical resistant, heat resistant, abrasion resistant. It's awesome. And we're gonna be using a textured black Duraback on the fender liners or on the wheel wells and the underside. And then we're gonna be using a smooth white Duraback for the roll cage. And huge thank you to Duraback for sending out these products for me to use on the Rally Miata. If you guys have a truck, you want a bed line or something you want to undercoat, anything. You can actually use this on the exterior. They've got smooth products so it looks like paint. They have a whole bunch of stuff. You should check them out. Link in the description down below. Now in order to apply the Duraback up here, I have to scuff everything up, clean it, and apply it. Pretty much just like normal paint. this. That stuff worked so well. Now this is only the first coat and you have to apply the first coat kind of lightly so you can see some of the blue behind but it looks so good. It's just it's so uniform and it, it's super sticky so it's gonna adhere really well. It looks so awesome. This car is starting to look brand new. I can't wait once once we get all the suspension stuff on it. I'm just I'm just I'm so excited for this thing. If you guys need a product to redo your undercoating, if you want to bedline your truck, or if you want to just put a protective coating on the exterior of your car, definitely go check out Duraback. Awesome product. While this first layer dries, I'm gonna go ahead and get to disassembling the front. Right now, for the front suspension, all we're doing is just replacing the tire rod ends and the ball joints. I was gonna get that lower control arm off to just replace that bushing but it did not want to cooperate. I broke the breaker bar, which means it's gonna be a pain in the butt. Not, not dealing with that right now. We have to get this thing done kind of quickly, so we can always do that in the future. We'll do it later.
subframe's back in, the differential's back in, the control arms with the new bushings are back in. Now before we put the hubs back in, we are going to be putting the new custom axles in. If you guys remember correctly, previously when we were driving on this thing, we had DIY axles, they were sketchy, but it made the thing drive. Obviously, if we want this thing to drive well and to make a bunch of power and be reliable, we needed some real axles. I hit up Drive Shaft Shop and they went ahead and made me a set of custom axles and a custom drive shaft for this beast. Now, Drive Shaft Shop is a shop that makes drive shafts and axles. But they don't just make OEM stuff, they can make any custom thing imaginable. So I just like, hey, I have a Miata, and I need an axle that goes from a Subaru diff to a Miata hub, and it needs to be this long, and it needs to be able to survive 400 horsepower. And they made me something. Let's see if they actually work, though, before saying anything else. These are the homemade ones. Those are the drive shaft shop ones. They look a little, a little beefy on the end. I hope it can all fit. I guess there's only one way to find out, but I mean, it's like a nice powder coated wrinkled black and. So it seems like the custom axle that we had made was a little bit too long, or I did hammer it all the way into the diff, but I'm not comfortable trying to hammer it in more about talking to Drive Shaft Shop first. As you could tell, we were hammering on it and it, it popped in. It seemed like it was locked in there, but there was still a gap between the seal and the, the, the stub of the axle. And when we tried to bolt the hub on like that, we couldn't get it in far enough because it was just too long. Even compressed the axle was just, just too long. Not a big deal, we'll get it figured out with drive shaft shop. They'll fix it or I'll hammer it in harder, whatever. The drive shaft fit perfectly, so that's awesome. The important part is that this looks fantastic. Subframe is looking good. The Durback on the wheel wells and such looks freaking insane. The control arms look great. And then the new bushings are in the control arms. Huge thank you to Moss Meow for providing those polyurethane bushings. If you want any parts for your Meow, check them out, of course. And huge thank you to Durback for providing the Durback. I think in the next video, we're gonna start removing the engine. I know I said I was gonna do that in this, this one, but that took a lot longer than expected. Paint is uh, easy, but time gets to make. And of course, if you wanna watch the next video, you guys can head over to Patreon and watch it right now. Otherwise, I will see you then. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you didn't, please give it a dislike. I'm Jinji, I'm bye. No, but if you are uh, not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing, I really appreciate it. And I'm Jinji, bye. Pasha, if you wanna do some like before and afters, possibly. Uh, I don't know if that's too much to ask, but what else? What? It does look really good. Wait, I'm in it. I was talking to Pasha. Where's Pasha? Pasha is an editor. Oh, you just talk to him? You don't even have to call him? No. Dude, I you don't even have to text him or call him? <laughs> yeah, just, he'll, just talk he'll to be cracking camera. up right now. He'll, you, he'll be laughing his ass off. You just send him the footage and you go, Pasha, <laughs> Edit Pasha, <laughs> bring me some coffee tomorrow morning. I'm going to need it. <laughs> no, unfortunately he doesn't do that. That's all right.